Hey everyone, Caleb with Antique Book Collective, and today I'm getting to you guys with a very interesting video, and that is Feast or Famine, which I got written down on this little thing right here. And the reason why I say Feast or Famine is because that's how your business model might end up being if you guys go for only expensive books in your eBay stores. So what am I talking about right here? So I'm talking about having really expensive books in your eBay store. I mean, I know it sounds really cool to have really expensive books. I mean, wow. You mean to tell me you have a book that's $30,000? That's amazing. That's, wow. You could sell that one book and you could be set for a whole year. Like, if you guys are really frugal and good at budgeting, that sort of stuff. But, like, you could really be set up really well if you have really expensive books. Like, if you sell that thing, you're set and pretty. However, there's a caveat with that. And that caveat is those expensive books don't always move very quickly. I mean, I've seen some books that people are trying to sell for several years literally years and because of that it sort of goes under the whole feast or famine mentality because you either are getting a ton of cash and you're feasting or you're waiting for your books to sell and it's a famine because you're eating top ramen or not even top ramen because you can't even afford that so because of that guys i really recommend of not avoiding high tier books because you can definitely sell those books i have sold them i have been very happy with the sales i've made some really good money off those high tier books however I would say don't avoid low tier books at the expense. Uh, well, don't don't focus on high tier at the expense of low tier, because when you do that, your sales will look like this. It's going to be all over the board, up, down, up, down, up, down, because you guys aren't going to be able to have enough inventory of those really high tier books, probably. Well, like 99% of the time, you probably won't have enough expensive books to get consistent sales, which means that you'll be going through the feast and famine cycle. And if you guys are doing this as just a side hustle sort of thing, that might work very well for you because you'll have like one weekend that you sold a bunch of books and you're like ecstatic because you made a ton of money. But if you're doing this as your main business, that's not going to work whatsoever. You need semi-consistent sales. Like, yeah, you can have some variations and that's fine. That's the business cycle. But you can't have like the up down really hard severe sales uh droughts and famines and feasts and famines sorry and because of that you guys you need to like supplement your inventory with those lower tier books as i've said in other videos i like to do between 25 dollars and 35 dollars as my base but my average sales price is about 70 dollars so with the average of 70 dollars that is with the high tier books and that's with the low tier books and in the end of the day my average is 70 which is still a very very healthy average for one sale being an average of $70 because that's either a one book sale or a one set of book sale. It's really stinking nice to have an average of about $70 in my sale price because end of the day that probably equates to at least $30 profits once you exclude every possible expense and honestly it's probably a little bit higher than that but I just want to be very conservative with you guys on this one. So when you guys have the low tier books low tier books I find sell pretty steadily and I actually avoid books that are $15 and lower because those actually seem to be a little bit up and down like feast and famine but on the low end of things which is annoying and the 25 to 35 mark seems to be a good base because those seem to sell pretty steadily for me and with that said books that are even all the way up to about $100 I find still has some pretty steady sales. However, once I have books that are several hundred dollars to even several thousand dollars, those books seem to not sell as often because you have to wait for just the right person to come by. Oftentimes those books that are really expensive are going to be very niche subjects or potentially if you are like me with my time machine book that I've told you guys about in another video, it might be a very popular book and it might be tens of thousands of dollars and those are a little easier to sell, but oftentimes the books that you'll have that are worth a lot of money are going to be the more niche subject ones that won't move as often, which means that you basically just have to wait for just the right person to come. And when just the right person comes, they'll probably buy your book basically whatever the price is, not guaranteed, but there are a lot of people that are going to spend a lot of money for a book that they've been looking for for years. Just a random example of that is I have a Charles Dickens set of books. They are little green ones. They're really cute. I've talked about them in other videos, but I bought them, they're from like the 1890s, and I was like, wow, these are really cool. And I listed them all as a set. I had all of them excluding one. I actually thought about buying that one book, but I didn't in the end, because I was like, yeah, maybe not. And before I could finish deciding if I wanted to do it or not, I actually had someone be like, hey, I will pay you $100 for this one book. I'll pay you $40 for this one book out of this set. And at the end of the day, I've actually made more money selling that set individually than selling it as a 
whole set because I was able to parse it out and just the right people came by and just the right people asked just the right questions and they were willing to pay a good amount of money because these people have been looking for these books for years. I actually had one person that said their grandfather was looking to complete the set, their father looked to complete the set, and now they were looking at doing it and I was finishing like a three generation plan that they were trying to finish this particular set of books, which is pretty cool. And at the end of the day, they were willing to pay more money, which is cool for me because I made more money out of it. And I told you guys in the other video that I spent $10 for that whole set and selling just one book for $100 or one book for $40, whatever I ended up spending it, uh, selling them for because I sold them all over the board. That's pretty good profit for me because I've paid off that set several times over now. So with all that said and done, guys, trust me, you don't want to just get those high tier books. That'll give you a feast famine cycle that is difficult as everything to budget around for you. And on top of that, your family is probably going to be like, oh, it's not a real business. It's not a real job because it's not consistent. A lot of people uh, put consistency and all that sort of stuff in what they consider a real job. And yeah, you might sell a book for $100,000, but oh, it's not a real job because you only sold one of those. So that is something that you guys will deal with if you have the whole feast famine cycle. So you do want to supplement with those more middle of the line side of things. You don't want to do the bottom tier ones because again, those can be feast and famine on their own and they're not even very profitable in the beginning. So that is something that you guys might want to avoid, but it is something that is pretty cool. So again, guys, I know I've said again like five times, but get those middle of the line ones because they get middle of the line sales. It's pretty steady. It's pretty easy to work around. And on top of that, best thing about all of this is those middle of the line ones I find I normally get more reviews on. I don't know why, but the bottom tier people uh, that buy the bottom tier books, you know, they don't tend to give me a lot of reviews. And the people on the high end, they like always give me re reviews, which is nice, but I don't get a whole lot of those sales. Whereas the middle of the line ones, I get pretty good sales out, uh, sorry, pretty good reviews out of it. I would say probably 10% or so uh, people leave me a review. Sometimes it's as high as 50%, I'd say. It really depends on the time of year. I don't know why. But yeah, that is something that does happen. And why I'm mentioning that is because rev reviews, when you have enough reviews, people that are buying those high tier books are going to feel more comfortable giving you their money because they're like, oh, this person is not just some fly by night guy who doesn't even have this book. They'll be like, this guy is completely legit. And if you guys are like me and you uh, niche down to just books or just antique books, I don't just do antique books, but uh, I do mostly antique books. And if you niche down to that point, a lot of your customers that leave reviews will be like, ooh, this antique book that I got was great condition. It was packed amazing. It was da 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 And they'll talk about just how you ship your antique books. And when people are buying those high tier books, uh, high tier price books, sorry, uh, they're going to see those reviews and they're gonna be like, oh, so not only are these books legit, these books are also packed very well, they're also very clean, they're also da 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 da, and they'll be able to glean all of that from reviews, which is very nice. And if you sold cars and antique books, the person's gonna be like, uh, this guy sells literally everything. I don't know for sure if he's gonna be very good at this particular thing. So because of that, I like to just have all the reviews I can that are just talking about antique books. That's really helped me in the long run, I believe. So with all that said and done, guys, I hope this video really helped you guys. Trust me, you really wanna have consistent sales over the feast and famine cycle. Like, yeah, you could still have those feast famine cycles with big sales, but you need to supplement it with some of those middle of the line ones because then you're just gonna have a little more smooth of a graph of sales charts. And again, guys, it's a lot easier to budget around. It's a lot easier to be like, okay, I know I can make this month's mortgage or rent or whatever. So thanks for the watch, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Be sure to subscribe and see you then.